in a small Texas town. Three white men are accused of killing a black man. He was drugged behind a truck and it was real brutal and real serious. Uh, body came apart. A gruesome murder inspired solely by racial hatred. Racism is a problem, but many of us felt that it would never reach the stage where someone would be actually, in a sense, lynched. White power! White power! And now a town struggles to come together. We're scarred. It's hurt a lot of people, lots of victims in this crime. We've got a lot of healing to do, the whole community does. Tonight, America in black and white, a murder in Jasper. From ABC News, this is Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. We never know for sure what the news will bring, and so we plan ahead, working on stories that may or may not get on the air as scheduled. As it turns out, three of the stories we plan for this week, very different from one another, nevertheless fit into our long-running America in Black and White series. Several days ago, we asked Nightline correspondent John Donvan to head out to Jasper, Texas. We thought this might be the right day to profile the town where a black man was dragged to his death behind a truck late last spring. Because the crime was particularly horrible, it and the trial attracted an extraordinary amount of attention. There were also certain assumptions about the town and especially its white residents. Those assumptions turn out to have been overly simplistic. A Jasper jury today took less than two hours to find white supremacist John William King guilty of capital murder. The town as a whole, it's roughly 55% white, 45% black, has been grappling with what to make of itself. John King, the convicted murderer, appears to be an aberration, but how bad are race relations in Jasper? Better, it turns out, than they were. Here's John Donvan. There are two ways you can look at the town of Jasper, Texas. You can travel at night down this country road where last June, James Byrd was dragged to his death. And you can muse about the evil this place gave birth to. Or you can drive in by daylight, taking Texas 190 from Houston, and be struck by how very familiar and ordinary and American Jasper really is. A town that is not evil so much as it is unlucky. I'm going to pronounce the verdict at this time. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of the offense of capital murder as alleged in the indictment. Thanks to the 24-year-old man, a jury today convicted of murdering James Byrd, along with two accomplices who have yet to be tried, Jasper, Texas will hereafter be stuck with a stigma. Because when terrible crimes are committed in small towns, there's a tendency for outsiders to brand the town with the crime, perhaps even to blame the town for the crime. And this crime, well, it was a lynching, one of the most heinous racially motivated murders of the late 20th century. The prosecution pulled no punches. They brought out the chain that was used to shackle James Byrd. They brought out the photos of the highway, where parts of Byrd were found scattered along a three-mile length, including his dentures, including his head. This was Mr. Byrd in life, playing the piano in this home video. Only yesterday, a pathologist testified that when they found him, his elbows were skinned down to the bone, which meant that he was trying to keep his head up as he was pulled down along that highway, trying to stay alive. The county sheriff, Billy Rolls, was one of the first on the scene, and he was the first witness the prosecution called. We found a cigarette lighter uh, with a KKK on it, and, and it, it didn't take long then to start putting things together, and, and I knew we was in trouble then. I knew that that this this old country sheriff needed, needed some help, because it was gonna be a big deal. Big deal? That was an understatement. It was the sheriff who called in the FBI, but the rest of the world showed up in Jasper uninvited. Of course, the media, like a horde. The satellite trucks, like a mushroom garden. I didn't know there was that much media in the world. Michael Loud is actually in the media himself. Well, testimony is scheduled to continue this morning. He owns a small radio station in town and has done all of the trial reporting. And it's not just media. It's not just media. 
Uh, I mean, everybody else in the world, you know. They had attorneys coming around. They had uh, ministers by the hundreds showing up, you know. I mean, it was like everybody just wanted to latch on to them to get into the do, spotlight. Do the them that Lout refers to are James Byrd's father and sisters, who, according to a friend, finally stuck their telephone in a drawer because it never stopped ringing. Oh, God, hear our plea. And when the Reverend Jesse Jackson came to town to minister to the family, even the local black clergy was disgusted. This is Kenneth Lyons, pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church, where the Bird family worships. Do I report accurately that you were concerned that Reverend Jackson might, might stir things up also? Yes, I was concerned. I didn't think he'd get, he, he, he had given me the proper respect as the Bird's pastor. Uh, he was interviewing them, and I was here at the church. That was your territory. Yes. <laughs> so I was kind of disturbed. In the end, Lyons and some other local people approached Jackson and requested that whatever he said in public, it be conciliatory, not inflammatory. That is precisely what Jackson did. Here we've seen an assertive white leadership relate to an assertive black leadership to start the next dimension of Jasper's existence. So you tamed <laughs> Jesse Jackson. <laughs> I tamed him, but uh, I think Jesse... You made the point. Yeah, I made the point. Jackson may have irritated some people, but these men caused a lot more concern. Members of the new Black Panthers, they showed up in Jasper carrying weapons with the stated purpose of rallying black people to defend themselves. They walked the streets, gave some people a good scare, and they made speeches. Black laws for all black people and black power. Black power! Black power! Black power! Black power! Yes, they showed up too. And the concern in this community, where whites just barely outnumber blacks, was that the murder of James Byrd could turn the two populations against each other. It did not happen. Yes, there was this scuffle in the street one afternoon, but except for the cops, everybody else involved was from out of town. Where were the people of Jasper? They were coming together. From the very first, starting with the prayer vigil the week that James Byrd died, whites and blacks have shared the outrage, shared the grief, shared a belief that this crime was an aberration that could not be allowed to undermine the community. When we asked lighting store owner Dot Scheibe what she thought of the murder, her husband Harry answered for her. Let me tell you what her reaction was. Let's build some gallows and hang them. Yeah, well. Really. And that probably was the general consensus of the community. Black and white clergy took it upon themselves to preach a message of healing. They were all there at the funeral, and even now they still preach about the need to heal after James Byrd's death. And in a town with more than 30 churches for fewer than 8,000 people, that is a lot of preaching. We fear the gospel of love more than we fear the gospel of hate. What we seek for is harmony and peace. And you can't fight fire with fire. It seems to have worked. Jasper has held together despite the terrible murder, despite the pressure from outside. But that does not mean that Jasper is quite the same place it was before. In fact, it isn't. Residents of this small East Texas community are now asking themselves, how much of a race problem do we actually have? That in part two of John Donvan's report when we come back. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by the New York Times. We look at it forwards. We look at it backwards. We offer a voice where there was none. The New York Times. Every day we reveal a world of perspective that others miss. It's all in how you look at it. The New York Times. Expect the world. No sample case. No order book. Hey, I can live with that. I've got a job to do. 
the back office delays are killing me. The home office wants to hear productivity is up. And if you're slow, you're dead. I don't know how we did it before. Everyone and everything working together in a whole new way to make your business succeed. 2020 Wednesday, he was a devout Christian family man living 19 years with a terrible secret. I could no longer hide something, not only from myself, but from my wife, from my children. He confessed and begged for forgiveness. Could you forgive? 2020 Wednesday. House fire is a race against time. The first concern that you have is getting to any potential victim inside. But what if those victims are children? They will survive if they're taught what to do in a fire emergency. Meet local firefighters teaching kids life-saving survival tips. You don't just run back into a fire. We found that many children haven't been told anything about fire safety. Mike Rowletter gets answers on fire safety that kids and parents need to see. Cause for alarm. Wednesday on 12 News at 6. We don't sell computers, TV stereos, car audios, our specialty. We're all pro audio. Those mega stars couldn't tell a woofer, but bit them in the butt. And if you have a problem, well, too bad, you're out of luck. They love to talk cheap prices. Hey, take a look at this. They're going to work you over, baby. You won't even get a kiss. Car audios, our specialty is what we do and know. Audio with an attitude, all pro audio. In the weeks after the murder of James Byrd, as whites and blacks stood shoulder to shoulder in sympathy and solidarity, an interesting thing happened. They began to talk to each other. And that was how whites learned that blacks were quite bothered that up in the town cemetery there was still a fence dating from ages past that separated black graves from whites. The first thing the community did was to tear down that fence. And it was hailed as a great step forward for racial harmony. But the whole story of the fence in the cemetery reveals something basic about life here in Jasper, and it's this. Whites tend to say that race relations in this community are just fine. Blacks say, not exactly. In fact, many of them speak of a deep grievance that most whites just weren't aware of until James Byrd was murdered. I think they were racist, but not really truly aware of it until this incident occurred. Does that mean it wasn't really a very tough racism that they exhibited? That's, that's what I'm trying to say. It wasn't real tough. They had this racism, but they kept it undercover. From themselves or from the outside? From the outside. This is news to an awful lot of white people in Jasper like pharmacist Ralph Shipman. I really don't know uh, what their grievance would be. Uh, they have a lot of representation in all levels of city government. They have representation in all the municipal uh, services and in school district. Uh, our school district has a lot of black teachers, a lot of black administration. Our hospital is administered by a black um, administrator. The town has a black mayor. Uh, they have plenty of voice. Now, if all of this is true, and it is, and if people seem to get along generally in daily life here, and they do, then why indeed do blacks in Jasper feel that they're not being treated equally? It is, says Willie King, who works for the gas company, the little things. We don't have a black car salesman. We don't have a black loan officer in a bank. As many blacks as there are, and as many people do business and put monies in banks. And to say that there is no racism in Jasper would be like saying the sun is not going to come up tomorrow. And Adrian Rollins, a college-educated forklift driver, we watched shooting hoops. A lot of blacks here don't get a lot of opportunity. Then when you go to college and come back home like I have done, they still treat you the same. Which is what? How do they treat you? They treat you lower than everybody else. And how do they do that? You have a degree. 
the other the white person does not have a degree. But yet and still they pick the white over the black. I don't think that's fair at all. It comes down to a complaint about white attitudes. And you might discount this as black oversensitivity, except in the last several months, whites here have taken a hard look at themselves, and many now admit that what blacks are speaking is the truth. The sheriff, for example. You mentioned that um, a lot of people in the community have taken a hard look at themselves. Does that include you? Sure it does. And what did you see? Sure it does. What did you see? I thought that, and still think, that I'm a good guy. I think that I'm colorblind. Uh, but it makes you look and think uh, when you get a someone that's, that's uh, of a different race than I am turns in an application, it makes you look at it a little better. I thought I was doing that, but I, I haven't gone out of my way to, to, to talk to people like I should. Uh, to black I'm correcting that, uh, that's right. Yesterday when I got in my car, there was a, about a five or six year old little black kid and his, uh, and his mom over there. Uh, probably a year ago, I'd have just got in my truck and left, maybe nodded or something. But I went over and talked to that baby and, and said hi to him. Uh, uh, I've got a long ways to go, just like, like you do and everybody else does. We, we think we're doing okay until you start uh, looking at, your, uh, uh, at yourself. And up at the middle school, teachers and other staff have learned a lot in diversity training that was launched in response to Bird's death. Even though you or I didn't grow up in the same location, if I learn what it's like to live in your location and you learn what it's like to live in my location, we'll have a better understanding of one another, and that's what we've done. And at the Catholic Church, Father Ron Fossage. I suppose I haven't seen that side of the community that they've seen. But I'm willing to work with them to change it. And that whites are even trying to Reverend Lyons, that is a remarkable thing in itself. That's why I, I continue to say it must have been a divine wake-up call to the consciousness of men. Is there anything that Jasper can do now to undo its reputation as the place where this terrible thing happened? Probably not. You know how people work. If I went up to the First Baptist Church today and if I donated a put $1,000 in the offering plate, nobody would know that tomorrow. But if I went up there today and if I stole a dollar out of that offering plate, people would remember that for 100 years. And uh, so uh, I think the town can do its best to try to, you know, to recover its name. And, but we've got a good town here. Good, but not perfect. And that perhaps is about all you can ask of any community in this country. And though Jasper was chosen for tragedy, as though the devil threw a dart at the map of Texas. This community is, after all, even with its problems, ordinary, familiar, American. I'm John Donvan for Nightline in Jasper, Texas. When we come back, we'll hear from one journalist who has, for the past seven months, been writing a book about the murder of James Byrd Jr. and its impact on Jasper, Texas. Imagine TV. When spring rolled around, some of the men would use their gold to purchase items that helped make life here in the camp more comfortable. There was Caleb in his soft leather boots, old Harvey in his goose down cushion chair, and of course Zeke in his new Mercury Grand Marquis. Courage, something shared by countless Americans. Those who risked their lives. Those who battled serious illness. When I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, I was primarily concerned with ridding myself of the cancer. But secondly, I was concerned about possible post-operative side effects like erectile dysfunction, ED, often called impotence. You know, it's a little embarrassing to talk about ED, but it's so important to millions of men and their partners that I decided to talk about it publicly. And after all, it can be associated with many conditions, including prostate surgery, high blood pressure, diabetes, or even smoking. And the point I want to make is there are many treatments available for ED, so my advice is get a medical checkup. It's the best way to get educated about ED and what can be done to treat it. It may take a little courage, but I've always found that everything worthwhile does. 
Michael. I say, Michael, would you like to hear a bird call? Sure, Foghorn. With MCI, a bird can call for just five, I say five cents a minute every Sunday and 10 cents a minute all week long. Now that, my friend, is a beautiful bird call. <laughs> the bird, I say the bird, thinks he's a comedian. Now stop stealing my material. Call, I say call 1-800-SUNDAYS to sign up. Don't get me riled. Coming up... I spent a night in jail myself. I was in the Beverly Hills jail, and room service was... Awful. Honest Television, Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher, coming up. Getting around doesn't have to be a struggle. Scooters Plus will help you regain your independence. If mobility and affordability are affecting your lifestyle, call or come by Scooters Plus, where power chairs and scooters are waiting for you to take a test drive. We care and look forward to helping you with Medicare and Medicaid. Mobility will enrich your life, so come to Scooters Plus, where improving your quality of life is our reward. Located behind Pier 1 in Beaumont. And joining us now from Jasper, Texas, is Dina Temple Raston, the White House correspondent for Bloomberg News. She has been back and forth between Washington and Jasper, Texas, ever since last year. Tell me, how did your preconceptions about Jasper hold up? Well, I think I pretty much thought that Jasper was going to be very racist. And as it turned out, Bill King really was an anomaly. And uh, that the black and white here have traditionally always gotten along very well. And uh, this dragging murder is something out of the ordinary here. And, and yet there were certain things, of, I mean, I, I, I think it clearly raised white consciousness uh, from what I'm hearing in Jasper. They didn't realize that they were still holding on to some of the old racist views that perhaps they had held. Well, John Donovan had a lot of really good points in his piece, and, and to put a finer point on it, I think the difference here is a generational one. I think that some of the people were 35 or 40 know how to deal with these racial issues much better than younger people like Bill King's age. And here, one of those big problems is 12% unemployment. And with 12% unemployment, everyone's fighting for the same jobs and they're scapegoating each other. And that's really been mostly the problem in Jasper. The fact that he is being referred to as white supremacist, uh, uh, paradoxically, I, I suspect, fills him with great pride. Well, exactly. That's one of the one of the ironies here is that when he was in prison, he actually didn't get into any of the sort of top uh, Aryan groups. He actually s sort of was in a smaller sect of the uh, CKA, the Confederate Knights of America, which is uh, a less violent group. It's not even an illegal group within the prisons. And there were only about five guys who were in this group with him. I mean, this is one of the sub-tragedies, I guess, of, of the, the larger tragedy of the murder itself. Uh, is that this young man is, in some ways, fulfilling his own ambitions. He is, but in, in, I think another one of the tragedies here is that if you actually talk to Bill King, uh, he doesn't seem like uh, a mean guy or a supremacist. He's very polite. He laughs at himself. Uh, there's not a lot of anger in his eyes. And I've spoken to him for long periods of time. And what's unnerving about him is that he looks like a high school sophomore that you could pass on the street. You are, in fact, the, the only reporter. I, I, has he talked to anybody else uh, other, other than his attorneys? Uh, no, and, and in fact, when I was originally speaking to him, he wasn't even talking to his attorneys. There's been a, a lot of conflict there. Why did he agree to talk to you? I have no idea. I, to a certain extent, I think it was a journalism ha Hail Mary pass. I think to another extent, he feels that Jasper as a city um, really hasn't stood behind him very well. And when I uh, started talking to him, I said I wanted to get his story out, and that's what I've tried to do. As you have talked to other citizens of Jasper, do they even have a clue who this young man is or was? I mean, they know who he is now, but uh, did he stand out in anybody's mind? That's what another one of the ironies about Bill King is, is that if you talk to anybody who went to high school with him, they know he was in their class. Uh, but they don't remember anything about him. He wasn't a particularly great student, but he wasn't a particularly bad student. He didn't play sports. In Texas, football is, you know, everything in high school. He didn't play football, so he hung out with the guys who went to rodeos. And uh, as, as he now looks back on it, did he set out to commit this murder? Was he setting out to, to uh, commit some sort of an act that would make him well-known or make him acceptable within the white racist community? Or do you think it was just a spur-of-the-moment thing? 
Well, I, I'm not sure. I mean, certainly there's a lot of uh, evidence that seems to indicate that this is something that he planned for a long time. When I asked him about these letters in which he was supposed to be setting up a gang in Jasper, he said he wrote all these tracks when he was in jail, and uh, he didn't even know that they were still in his apartment, and uh, that this wasn't something that he was doing. I think to a larger extent, you know, I asked him whether or not he felt sorry for James Byrd's family. And he did say that uh, anyone who dies that way shouldn't have to die that way. And that made him sad. So even though he's not admitting to the murder, I think there is probably a little bit of remorse for what he did. You've spoken to members of his family also. What do you, what do you make of them? Well, you know, I think the first thing everybody wants to say about Bill King is that his parents must be racist and this must have been a learned behavior. But in fact, his father, Ronald King, is an absolute doll. And he has uh, black and white friends. And uh, he's a very, very sensitive guy, cries a lot, very upset about what happened to Bill, doesn't understand how this could have happened, blames his two years in prison because Bill was never like this before, never violent before. And... Um, I think the simplistic uh, explanation for all of this would be that uh, you know he came from racist parents and this was passed on to him, but that just isn't the case here. Dina, thank you very much indeed. Absolutely. Nice to be here. I'll be back in a moment. Oh, man, it's early. Did they test through to the router? We're merging two totally different bank networks. Gotta work seamlessly. Seamless. AT&T says it's ready to go. <sighs> Either gonna be the hero today or... <laughs> or hiding in the john, right? Hero. Yeah. Everyone and everything working together in a whole new way. Hey, fellas. Bored with those canned potato crisps? Get ready to rock. Introducing new baked rubbers. Huge potato taste, more crunch, and baked ruffles have a lot less fat than Pringles original. The taste is going to rock your world. You ready to rock? New baked ruffles, ridges that rock. This Thursday, the movie event that will take your breath away. They're four friends who share everything. He was the one I'd been waiting for all my life. Their hopes. What do you want from a man? Everything. Their heartbreaks. You're leaving me for another woman. Their happiness. And through it all, they have each other. Whitney Houston and an all-star cast are coming to ABC. Give me some! Waiting to exhale, Thursday, 9, 8 central. Tons is your compact computer headquarters with guaranteed low prices on a great selection of computers, monitors, and printers. Get a compact computer with a 333 megahertz processor, 32 megabytes of RAM, and 4 gigabyte hard drive, and 56K modem for a super low $599. And with Khan's flexible credit, your computer purchase is made easier than ever. Come in today to save money on a great selection of quality compact computers. Then choose a financing plan that fits your budget only at your neighborhood Khan. New cars cost big bucks. If your car runs good, looks bad, get our Mako Supreme Plus deal. A great paint package at half price. Now only 225 bucks. Painting your car with Mako Supreme Plus at half price? That's America's smart choice. She runs a mean courtroom. <laughs> so you know the drill. Are we understanding each other? Weekdays at 4 on Channel 12. As the jury in Jasper considers whether to impose the death penalty or life in prison for the killer of James Byrd, Jr., a conversation tomorrow with the victim's sister on Good Morning America. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. Nightline has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. ABCnews.com, now a part of the Go Network. Tomorrow on World News, some HMOs too busy counting pennies, but others making house calls. Who'd believe it? On World News Tonight. Life-saving fire safety tips, Wednesday night on 12 News at 6. We don't sell computers.
computers, TV, stereo.